Hey now, it is dot NYC number two pilot beta. We don't know what the hell we're doing yet. We're changing it all the time, but this is the first effort that we're on the Twit live stream. It's the it's a crack of dawn in California, so no one's watching there. I hope some folks are watching, but you can watch this later on YouTube, and we'll figure all this out as we go. Uh, so this is a show from the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism, uh, the J School, as we like to call it, about tech in New York, the intersection of technology to media, journalism, fashion, advertising, Wall Street greed, whatever the hell we want. And so we're trying out all kinds of new formats. So today we're going to be jam-packed with stuff, and I'm delighted that we have... Julia Furlan, who is here from the BuzzFeed show Internet Explorer. Yes. And a podcast maven and genius in all kinds of ways. Oh. And so Julia's going to act as co-host today as we start to figure out what the hell this is. And then we also have my good friend Don Barber. Don, a co-founder of the uh, New York Tech Meetup and all kinds of other things. has helped us here in our programs at CUNY with our entrepreneurs. She is the... um, a uh, patron saint of entrepreneurs in New York. Kind of you to say, Jeff. <laughs> Very kind of you to say. So, that's our intro for show. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for having me, and congratulations, Jeff, on when I when you first started the center. I this this didn't exist, so I applaud you, right. and I'm glad it's it's actually happening at CUNY, our city university. They lied to you if they said we're going to pay you to say these things. (laughs) No, I'm not being paid. (laughs) Um, So so we have some stories to talk about, but but this is kind of our first discussion about New York tech. And and I met last week with some folks from, uh, I think it's called Whitney, Women in Tech New York or some such. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about uh, trying to brand New York technology and also trying to deal with the issue of diversity in technology. And, and so I've got a question here. Oh, co- collective side. So we know, I mean, we all watched the first episode of, of Silicon Valley the other night. So we know the bro culture that exists on the other coast. Mm. Is it any better here? I don't know. You want to go first, Don? <laughs> well, I'll say, I'll say a couple things. You know, for one, I don't really like uh, for our New York tech community to even be compared to other coasts. That's one, because as far as I'm concerned, we do a great job here and we're doing awesome creative things in our own right. Um, but I will also say that it's a problem in general. It's certainly a problem here, just like it's a problem there and, and in, in the technology um, community, global community. But I will say that New York, I think, has some special um, assets that uh, make the um, environment ripe for at least addressing it and and in a in a better way. So we have more creativity. We have media. We have culture. We have are living all on top of each other, and we're more of a melting pot. So just our demographic in general, um, as a as a uh, total population, I think is better. And I'm I'm a New Yorker, so I think it's better. Um, and and then because. Because tech, I think, is infiltrating uh, other sectors, uh, that's a good thing. So I think that can only make for a much better and a much um, much more vibrant and diverse scene. That said, you know, it's not going fast enough for us. You know, it's mm-hmm. not going fast enough, and um, you know, not. It, it's not where we want it to be. But Did you study yeah. CS? No, no, I didn't. But I, I feel strongly that like I, I agree with you but I think that the word diversity is just getting this like raggedy raggedy we're, I'm just so sick of it because you know I, I come from a public radio world which is where I started my career and public radio in many ways has like some of the same problems that the tech world does it's uh, especially I mean podcasting is its own um, you know White Is dude, broadcast. Yeah, really? there's oh. lots. Of, I mean, it's, it was well, well, yeah, because yeah, it started yeah. in the tech world. It yeah, started in the yeah. tech world, you know, uh, 15 years ago with these like broy bros being like, well, "Hello, you can hear my voice." Um, <laughs> and like, I, I'm just good to pick men. <laughs> <laughs> white men in particular. Hey, hey, hey. You don't know, all sound like that. I can do your whole show like this if you want. Um, but you know, diversity is this word that people throw around. They mean it for, uh, you know, gender breakdowns. They mean it for race. Um, it's it's used by, like, people in power to signify that they are um, some sort of, like, they're atoning for their past sins or the sins of their industry. More in line. But, um, you know, it's... <laughs> when you get down to it, like, 
if you don't pay your interns, how are you going to hire people out of outside of like the class of people who are already mm -hmm. able to make mm -hmm. media? Mm -hmm. And in tech, I see a lot of money and a lot of ability, and sometimes they do, you know, um, facilitate this this you know ease for people of other backgrounds to come into the tech fold, but um, you know. It's it's just a constant struggle, and it should not be put on the people in the minority that's right. to advocate. No, I, for I that's absolutely that. right. And I'll just add to the, that. You know, that's um, on one end, and on the other end, I'll also say that you know, unless we change the investment side of the table, the mm -hmm. actual investors mm -hmm. and the people in control of the money, not just the assistants that work at the VC firms or you know with angels, but the actual people doling out the money and in charge, that's where we have to get, that's where we have to do it. Well, let me ask you job. about the education, since we're in a school, let me ask about the educational piece of this. So, so these folks that I was, this is a, 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 an initiative from CUNY and the new Cornell New York campus mm -hmm. and Verizon and others, and so their goal is to get more uh, young women to take computer science. Okay. Okay. So a few things there. One is computer science is, is real world. You walk in the classroom and the problem is you see no one who looks like me, they say, so right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, no, they all look like you. Well, that's true. <laughs> me, in quotes. Uh, yes, they all do look like me, just younger. Uh, and, and, and so the, the, part of the problem is, I think, the, the, is, is rebranding computer science, is mm -hmm. rethinking what computer science looks like and how that operates. One of our graduates here from the Entrepreneurial Journalism Program, plug, um, named Otta <laughs> Bernier, started a company called Skill Crush. Mm -hmm. And yes, the aim is primarily that she taught herself programming. She, she, she learned in the bro way and didn't like it and wanted to start something that primarily aimed at teaching women programming. Is it important to get women into computer science purely? Uh, is that going to be the center and the locus of all power in the next decades? Or are there other areas as well? I mean, I think we have to open it up to, to everyone, of course, um, CS, but also, you know, design thinking and, and just making environments that are welcoming for everyone, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's I, I think it's less about um, certain skills. I mean, sure, you know, um, Fred and our mayor have, you know, launched uh, CS for All, so that's awesome in our public schools. That's what we need. But who's teaching that? How are they teaching that? And when they're teaching it, are they, you know, are there unconscious biases that they're not even aware of? I mean, this yes, is, there this are. is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a question though. Are you saying that like it needs to be taught differently? Or are you saying that it just needs to be an environment that is more open? I'm a New Yorker and a professor, so I will take the um, <laughs> prerogative of turning the question into a question. What do, <laughs> what do you think? Um, I think that. <laughs> I think that it, I, I assume that what you mean is that like the environment needs to change to facilitate um, more openness for and like a, a better environment for a more diverse group of people. Because yeah. if you are teaching it differently, that is crazy talk because we're all just, we all have brains and we all know how to learn and we all oh, right, can right. do it. Yeah, right. but I, I think the environment, I think that, that was Otto's point is the environment. Yeah. I think that's true. But I also think uh, that. Uh, you know, my son Jake was here, was a CS major, and I think arrived at college, tell me if I'm wrong, Jake, uh, that um, it was more, less Mickey and more math, right? And so part of the thing that I talk about is, is the idea of applied computer science. Uh, that's part of what I think we have here at journalism school is, is we have people who want to start to learn coding now, and we're 70% female here, which is great. That's mm -hmm. what journalism schools tend to be. So now if we can bring people into technology, not through a CS degree, but through saying, let's make stuff mm. and apply computer science in an area that you care about. That's where I also do want to change the teaching, not just for any one group, but, mm -hmm. but as a whole, because I think that gets us away from the, the notion of computer science as a priesthood. Right, that it's an interdisciplinary thing that should be integrated. And I mean, honestly, one of the best things about working at BuzzFeed is watching how the media and the, the things that people make and the tech are sort of parallel and going up. It's not like some automaton in a cloud says, do this, um, you don't have a CMS to do it, we don't know how to, you should do it, uh, it's gonna look like crap on mobile, it's gonna look, uh, you know, it's not gonna look great on mobile, it's not gonna go anywhere, right. but like the fact that there is a tech parallel to all of the media mm -hmm. that's being created is like one of the most powerful things I've ever been able to, you know, 
I, it, it's a great environment for me, but you know, we're getting off the topic. Of no, 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 that's, no, that's, that's cool. what we're all about, that's cool. getting off topics. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, so, and that's exactly why Isabel Draves and I ha are launching Creative Tech Week, too. Creative Tech Week is all about the intersection of art and culture and creativity and technology. I think we're in nascent stages of figuring out what we can do with tech and, and how it can affect, whether it's media, learning, um, experiential, things, um, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. And so I think it's important that, again, the environments for learning that stuff be welcoming and, and yeah. be inclusive. Well, let's take a moment to brag, because we are New Yorkers, you got a yes. problem with that, um, <laughs> that the Global Startup Ecosystem Report from Compass, and I have no idea who they are or how they judge this, uh, now says that in the top U.S. startup cities last year, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley was one and New York was number two, yeah. up from number well, five. Mm -hmm. And Seattle is like off the charts now. Yeah. Bye bye. Too yeah. caffeinated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too white. Yeah. 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 Speaking so of diversity. White. Yeah. So white. Uh, so I think we have some things to brag about here. Yeah. I think I think that, exactly. that that New York Tech Meetup, which you've been involved in, has been a really important part of this. Mm -hmm. The venture capital scene. Uh, Fred Wilson uh, as yeah. our kind of um, dean of VCs at Union Square Ventures, I think, has right. been an important. And a lot influence. of the VCs in New York who who have been around for for a while. So I just want to take this moment to say, Yay, New York! I mean, you can see it. You can see that button-down life at every pret a manger in the Flatiron <laughs> District. And I will say, but, it still looks pretty white, and it still looks pretty bro -y, but, like, right. yeah, I, I, it's great to see that... I, I can imagine that people want to move to New York. It's an aspirational place. It's the center of the friggin' universe. Right. Yeah. I mean, even if it's not the center of... The like even even if you don't think that which I do hey, uh, hey. no no, no is I know the I know of the world <laughs> is the of the world. but Rest you know Florida. even if you don't think that it's an aspirational lifestyle yeah. it's an aspirational place to make your life and I think that um, it's it's becoming uh, affordable and it's becoming well affordable to yeah. those people who are able to start you know to have the the money to the means to come here. So TechCrunch's uh, Mona Bijour wrote mm. a piece saying that, uh, why New York is so great. So we're not gonna, we're not going to stop this bragging because we're trying to get under the skin of Silicon Valley and the Twit Network. <laughs> uh, and why is New York so and, 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 and gave three reasons. One is hyphen tech, which is what you've both been saying. Mm -hmm. Is it is that intersection here right. that we're not purely a software culture. Fashion and, and finance and advertising and, and media are all yeah. here, yeah. and that matters. Two is says more diversity. So even though we're not there, even though we got a problem with that in the well, industry, our yes, our population, our population is something more is, diverse, and that's and and like I said, you know, because tech is now infiltrating, now really fully kind of in, infiltrated all of these sectors, then you can't help but get more diversity in our sector as well. I mean, you know, it's not again, it's not where we want it to be, but I I think um, it has hope. There's well, hope. <laughs> yeah, and there's, you know, and the number of uh, educational institutions, you yeah. know, call it both higher education and also, like, the New York City public school system is tremendously, it's full of people who are, um, you know, really excelling in various ways. And I think that um, if we put those structures in place and sort of in establish, um, you know, STEM education and, yep. and start from the like middle schoolers who are doing Rube Goldberg machines and go from there, I think that that there's a huge future for, for New York in this way. Yeah, I get excited too. I walk, there's a place down in, in the garment, we're, we're in the Shimada district of New York, in the garment district. <laughs> and, I, and I walk down uh, 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 town a few blocks. Fashion Avenue. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, can't you tell? <laughs> um, and uh, look at the shoes. Look at the all shoes. Black. New, no, York, great New shoes. York uniform, uh, Jeff, all black. Uh, so it's easier. So enough bragging about New York. Um, <laughs> well, I'll just say one other thing, Jeff. You know, so there's the future, but I um, I don't know if you know about this uh, show. I think it's about to close at the New York Historical Society called Silicon City. More people should have really known about this, but you know what I find interesting about it is they did a whole um, uh, exhibit on the history of the computer in New York. So other coasts get all this, you know, history. We're steeped in this history. You know, there's inno tech innovation has been going on in New York for actually a long time, mm -hmm. and I think to highlight the history 
is is good for the present and and the future as well. Absolutely. Yeah. We got big progress. It's a cool show. All right. So a few other stories, and then we'll move okay. on to some other fun stuff like VR and gadgets and other yes, things. Yes. Yes. Uh, one story that fascinated me this week. Uh, just because I'm a wonky journalist, mm -hmm. is I was very sad to see uh, the New York Daily News, uh, and I'm not going to mispronounce his name, but I think it's Jotham Sederstrom, uh, was fired because he was the editor of some columns that uh, were accused of plagiarism. And he wrote a magnificent, I thought, open piece on, on um, Medium, uh, taking full blame, taking full responsibility. But the problem in the end was the CMS. The problem was that he had cut and paste stuff from one place to another, right. and the block quote <coughs> didn't didn't hold. So the things that were meant to be marked as quotes, two paragraphs or whatever, mm -hmm. did not look that way. Uh, and he, A, was fired, which I think he's an excellent editor, and I think he'll get fire, uh, hired in, in, a, in a second. Mm -hmm. um, uh, B, he did fall on his own sword and say, okay, I was responsible at the end, and I did this. But a really interesting piece uh, by Austin Smith from uh, Alley uh, Interactive, I think it is, uh, arguing that there's also a, um, an ethical standard that stands from the technologists who are now working with media, that they mm -hmm. have to take responsibility for their user interface. Absolutely. So, Anyone who has, I mean, trying to file a story in a CMS that is mad at you or feels mad at you, <laughs> it's, you know, you're like under the guise of a very mean very stupid dictator and you're just like come on like upload the page and I, I i think that like in this situation there was another uh incident with the new york daily news two weeks ago with sean king who was accused of plagiarism um and then eventually they they found out that it was an editor who had you know taken out the this attribution was, this was the same, this of the, the daily oh, oh right, this was right. It. yes right where um, they take they took away the attribution and then because the attribution was right. was a piece of code it was right. block quote right exactly and I think that um, as as technologists people they need to think about how people are using the technology and uh, in this piece he talks about a code of ethics that there should be some sort of ethical code and really the best people I've ever worked with in product are people who are trained in journalism, who came from other media outlets or who understand media so that they can see the objective of the journalist and support that instead of sort of breaking it down um, and making these tools that are like, oh, isn't that cool? Completely useless, you know? Well, and I think it's the, um, I think it's the design element, right? And this is where I, um, again, applaud you, Jeff, on even starting the entrepreneurial journalism program here at CUNY, right? So that's um, integrating entrepreneurialism and journalism. And, and what does that mean? So with, with the intersection that I've had with, with your, um, with, with your uh, department here is that, um, you know, they, they need to understand the technology piece of that. When, so when you're a journalist, like at this point, you kind of got to know so it. You got to know it. It's, I, yeah. I don't think it should be an afterthought. So you're teaching these students to sort of go forth and conquer and kind of create your own business. Yeah, but you and know what, no, it's, 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 it's a problem still because I know. what we really have to teach what you said earlier Julie, was, was about this notion of working together with technologists mm -hmm. working in a team right mm -hmm. right if I have a school is nothing but and by the way it's very quiet here right now if you can see the window at some point <laughs> because it's spring break but I have a school here filled with nothing but journalists so I don't have the technologists and the business people and the designers and the data people to mm -hmm. teach them how to work in a team uh, I'm sorry one more plug for the school but you have to um, get them eventually Jeff. We, we do we do so we, we also just put out a report this week uh, by Mark Stencil and Kim Perry Mark used to be they both used to be at the NPR on on the new superpowers that journalists need as skills and they talked to executives at a bunch of media companies old and new local and national uh, digital and, and and print and and found out what they need, needed and and the presumption now is that of course you're going to have storytelling skills and reporting skills that's the given right. but what you need is some combination of superpower skills as they say around product development audience development mm -hmm. um, all these kinds of design all what these kinds of skills. UX, like how is right. a user going to experience, yes. you know, like right. as journalists, as writers, as podcasters, um, we think all the time about our audience. Our audience is, is the reason that we are doing the thing. Why would we not think about their experience after we throw something into a CMS? You know, like why are like, we, we may not be able to change the loading times, but if we can put, you know, like at, at BuzzFeed, we've sort of, 
as we've expanded into a global company that's trying to translate stories that are written in Japan into German without going through English, like there are lots mm -hmm. of initiatives of complicated people trying to work together. They've basically said, you know, um, the internet in certain countries, if your story is going to be translated, the internet isn't as, as strong. So like avoid Instagram embeds, but do this kind of, mm -hmm. you know, like let's, let's um, focus on how to make the loading time of the experience of the page worthwhile for your audience. Well, is it, do you go in. to lower com lowest common denominator or do you, you know, sort of design for the, fa I mean, the, the thing is for journalists, I think you kind of have to take it all into account. You have to take in so much more into account than you used to. It used to just be a printed page. Mm -hmm. Got it. Everyone understands it's now. It's the well, phone. Is it this about. phone? Is it that phone? Is it the mm -hmm. iPad? Yes. This size? That size? Well, indeed, there was a story this week from Natev Insights about mm -hmm. BuzzFeed. And, 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 and I you, saw that. You have this, okay, good. I'll show this to you now. <laughs> uh, I'm in a true uncomfortable position here. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I saw Jonah Peretti, the founder of, of BuzzFeed, in an event a few months ago where he said that out of the then 5 billion interactions a month that occur, only four, 1 billion occur at buzzfeed.com. Right? Oh, yeah. The rest is distributed all over. So it's native. It's not just about the UI. It's also right. native and appropriate to the platform where the person is and their use of the time. Mm -hmm. So there's this wonderful piece here showing all kinds of the networks that BuzzFeed goes to listing distribution channels and uh, 45 distribution channels. Whoa. 45. Right. Ten I, and not networks. everybody uses That's all of them. them. And like different corners use different. Some, right. So and talk about that for a minute. Talk about the skills you yeah, need that's hard. to be able to say, this is something I want to get across to people, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go to where they are. Yeah. Then how do you think now about a story? Because you don't think in that, in that I'm going to fill 600 word slot right. and print product. I mean, if you are thinking that, what are you doing? Um, and you're it goes ready down for your to, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and it goes back to, like everything can be calculated and sort of thought about in this way. And at BuzzFeed, we try and be really guided by data. And we try and make decisions based on like quantifiable things. Um, I, I feel like the most important thing is sort of considering how somebody is going to absorb whatever it is that you're going to do. Um, so the person who is experimenting and, and then there's this word that I also am sort of averse to, which is experimentation. I think it's like used to broadly categorize anything that the anyone does. Right, sins, yeah. right. Um, and it's, I mean, it's great to experiment, but basically you have to find somebody who knows how to use this thing or learns how to use this thing and spread that knowledge so that that, that knowledge can inform, um, you know, like, how you write your sentences and how you, um, how many embeds you should have or if you should have embeds. And, um, you know, like we know that a certain audience, like a Brazilian audience is very interested in nostalgia and humor um, and how do we get them into news? You know, like how can we sort of break down? So you have to think content. And, and it's not just about exactly. the platform, it's you about have to think, culture. Yeah, and, it's, yeah. and it has to do, and Basically, it's just a bunch of people trying everything they can to make something good. I guess I want everything to be, I'm naive, I'm not a journalist. Um, I want everything to be snowfall. Yeah. It's oh. so beautiful. Yeah, but it's that's so, appropriate it to one you story. Into you know? Right, guys. Know. Do you know how boring it would be but, if I wrote like a story <laughs> about an Instagram or like a Vine star that was like, this Vine star went viral for making a bubble sound with her mouth. Yeah, but you have which to is have an, her name story. is Reiko Uzeki. She's great. <laughs> but if I wrote that and I was like I'm going to make it snowfall, it would not be good. But you have to get the story. I mean, part of what makes snowfall great isn't just all the all the media bells and whistles, but it's the story. It's the story. Then sometimes sometimes things aren't with, stories. Sometimes right. you got to cross something. Yes. It's, a, it's a moment, it's an experience, it's a share. I've told the story before. I went to VidCon last year, and this year I'm going again, so I can take my daughter, who was pissed at me I didn't take her last year. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I learned there that video there is a social token that people pass because it's part of their conversation. It's not a destination. It's not necessarily a story. It's a piece of a larger conversation. Like, check this You know, out. I see this, we'll talk about yeah. VR in a few minutes, but I see this in VR all the time where somebody says, let's do that interview in 360. Well, why? Because all you're going to see behind you is nothing, <laughs> right? And you don't think about what's appropriate, what, what, what's the potential of this tool, what's the culture of the, that's the other important point, is the culture of the, of the audience, yeah. I hate the word audience, but the audience you're speaking with, mm. um, 
or one more story, which I which is related to this, which I found uh, uh, gratifying this week, is that Vox, which is one of the great innovators besides BuzzFeed, out there, <laughs> uh, announced that they were going to start. <laughs> no, agree. Uh, no, agree. Agree. Yeah, no, we need more innovation. Great work, yes. Vox is also here on the East Coast. That's right. Like BuzzFeed New- kind of used to be. <laughs> um, New York rules media. So so Vox uh, started um, Circuit Breaker. And they announced it as a new gadget blog. We were talking about gadgets momentarily. Yeah. Damn, uh, on solely this. on Facebook. Now, I got all excited about this. I've been telling media companies that they should consider starting new media properties entirely on platforms. Yes, it feels risky. Yes, we lose control. But get over it. We've already lost it. And so I got excited about this. So then, so I, went, I was happy. Then I went and looked at Circuit Breaker on, on Facebook here. Mm-hmm. And I clicked on things. And I said, let's go to a web page and a website. What new? What's the big deal? How <laughs> tight? Like an idiot, like an old fart, I was using a laptop. Screw oh. the laptop. Is it an instant article? It's an instant article. Okay. So on instant articles, if you go to Circuit Breaker on Facebook, which is a very good gadget block, uh, uh, great people working on this, uh, Neelay Patel, and you click on a link, you get an instant article experience. Mm-hmm. Now, the odd thing is that Facebook still requires, you still have to have an RSS feed from web pages. Oh so God. you still have a web RSS presence. RSS feeds. I, I know, the bane of journalism. Uh, well, I am right? a podcast person, and I make podcasts, and I've just been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> until somebody just, like, smashes the RSS feed and fixes it. And and makes it not because it's it well, feels so obsolete. But it's, well, what, it's what made podcasts possible. I know that you I can mean, subscribe I'm grateful. to something. Like yeah. thanks, but like, well, you want to redesign? Yeah, I mean, and iTunes holds a lot of the power, and there, there. I mean, and there are lots of things. That, and podcasting is different. We don't have to talk about podcasting, but like, hmm. in general, when you give your content to. a a new platform that's going to be able to gatekeep and sort of figure things out. It's kind of, it's hit or miss. It's what you're saying. You're like, this is the um, title of Beyonce's Lemonade, (laughs) right? Absolutely. I mean, there's, by the way, Right. I oh my God! I watched it? it twice, and then I had a three-hour conversation with my two best friends <laughs> about feminism and all kinds of stuff. It was great. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I think that's our first segment of our second show, which is kind of our first show because we don't know what we're doing. We're making it up as we go, but that's us. We're New Yorkers. We talk fast. You got a problem with that? <laughs> uh, so we're going to be very Good awkwardly job. now say goodbye to Don. And Don, wonderful to have you here. Thanks Thank so you much, very Jeff. Much. So really, thanks a lot. And, and, and